This is a CBS News special report. The flight of Apollo 9. Today, a walk in space. Brought to you by Western Electric, manufacturing and supply unit of the Bell System, as part of our continuing coverage of important news events. Reporting from the CBS News Apollo headquarters in New York, correspondent Walter Cronkite. You recall that yesterday evening the spacewalk was canceled for today when Rusty Schweikert, the 33-year-old civilian uh, lunar module pilot who was supposed to make that two-hour and 15-minute walk, uh, said that, uh, indicated he didn't quite feel like it. He'd had a day of an upset stomach and had vomited a couple of times. And it was decided by Commander Jim McDivitt and those men on the ground monitoring this flight from Houston, Texas, that uh, he should not attempt the uh, space walk. However, this morning, Schweikert felt so well that 45 minutes ago, it was decided by Commander McDivitt, Schweikert, and the ground control that he would indeed leave the lunar module for at least 45 minutes of a dayside pass across the United States, uh, perching out on the so-called front porch out here of the lunar module. He may even go beyond that. The last report was he was feeling real good with the words uh, from space, and uh, he may decide that he wants to go on and take the full walk up to the command module as it had been originally planned. As it is now, the spacecraft, uh, the mothership, has been depressurized, as has the lunar module. That is, uh, they are now in the environment of space in, the, in their space suits, the full space suits, uh, with the helmets and the thermal protection and the micrometeoroid protection in the case of Schweikert and all of that. They're out over the Australia, entering uh, their flight across the South Pacific, and another five minutes or so when they're out somewhere northwest of Samoa, Schweikert will leave the lunar module and uh, take that uh, 45 minutes out on the porch and perhaps go beyond that. We'll have full details in all this uh, in a very short while for you and the uh, simulation of what is going on in space uh, from uh, Grumman Aircraft in uh, Long Island and also from uh, North American Rockwell out in California. CBS News color coverage of the flight of Apollo 9 will continue in a moment. Clean air. Clean water. They're worth fighting for. At Western Electric Plants, all across the country, we've been fighting for cleaner air and water for years. Fighting pollution doesn't make the telephone equipment Western Electric builds for the Bell Telephone Companies any better. But we breathe a little easier, knowing you do. David Scott has opened the hatch of the command module, and Rusty Schweikert and Jim McDivitt in the lunar landing craft have opened the front hatch of that craft now. And very shortly, Rusty Schweikert will be leaving uh, th through that hatch to the front porch. We'll listen to the conversation. The communications have been quite good, uh, relayed uh, from over Australia. While we uh, watch what is going on, as uh, simulated out at uh, Grumman Aircraft by our test uh, astronaut, uh, Scotty McLeod. Steve Rowan is out there with him. Let's listen in. This is Rusty Schweikert speaking to Jim McDivitt. Hey, Jim looks out the uh, top window. He can see me. It's all the way. Oh. That's all I can see you, Dave. Uh, Jim, uh, you're going to have to try and be a little more careful about that block. Cutting uh, to the big squeal when both you are good. Okay, Jim, uh, you I'm 
That backpack that Schweikert is wearing, as you see here. What? The blue guy. Yeah. Yeah, you really can see it at night, can't you? Yeah. The backpack's a 185-pound uh, life support system. A little pack on top called an oxygen purge unit is a a really a lifesaver with a half hour of oxygen supply in case the other system should go wrong. Schweikert puts his feet into the so-called golden slippers which are attached on the front porch and which can hold him down so that his hands are free to work in space. He, he will attach a, a, a camera for a series of rapid still pictures faced back along the okay, uh, lunar module and the command ship. Just about uh, to your left shoulder, how's that? Uh, when I'm standing in the slippers? Right. Okay. You see simulated there, Jim McDivitt passing out a tether rope, nylon rope, uh, 25 feet in length that is nothing but a lifeline back to the ship. Uh, it has no, it carries no oxygen or communications equipment. It's merely a tether. Yeah, that's it, isn't it? And that's LOS at Huntsville. Rusty Schweikert out in the golden slippers on the front porch of the limb. We copied a few unofficial times here. We'll refine those later, but Jim uh, McDivitt reported uh, 
at 72.57 that the lunar module had been depressed for 12 minutes. We uh, copied uh, CSM depress as 72.59. We copied the start of the egress when Rusty started out the hatch as 7307.37. And he reported being in the slippers at 7308.08. You may have heard a reference uh, where Rusty reported that he could uh, see the bullseye very well. Astronaut Dick Gordon, who's in the control room right now, says that's a reference to the star Aldebra, which is familiar to uh, navigators. Old friends of Aldebra call it the bullseye. We'll be back up at the Redstone at 73 hours, 19 minutes, about 19 and a half minutes. This is Mission Control, Houston. And so Rusty Schweikert is out there on the front porch, as you've heard and as you've seen through this simulation at Grumman Aircraft Engineering, where they built the lunar module. They are out of touch with a ground station at this moment, but will be picking up a, another uh, very shortly. And the transmission from the spacecraft, the uh, remarkable conversation between Commander Jim McDivitt inside the lunar module and Rusty Schweikert now standing outside there, uh, will be continued. They will be running into a dawn uh, in another uh, 20 minutes or so, and then we'll make a dayside pass, as it's called, across the United States. At that time, uh, Schweikert may choose if he's feeling well, and every report today has been that he is feeling well, uh, may decide to continue with his space walk. So far, he's been authorized uh, only to stand out there on the uh, porch for the 45 minutes of the daylight uh, pass. However, the original schedule was for two hours and 15 minutes, including the crawl uh, up the lunar module uh, to the command module, and then into the open hatch, where now David Scott uh, presumably is standing. He stayed back in the command module, you know. Uh, then back to the lunar module for Schweikert and inside two hours and 15 minutes later. At one point, when he gets back on that porch, if he does make the walk, he will uh, take the seven and a half pound uh, television camera and mount it out there on the rail uh, of the lunar module steps and uh, get some pictures from space for us. Uh, that should come around two o'clock, a couple of minutes before two o'clock Eastern Standard Time. CBS News color coverage of the flight of Apollo 9 will continue in a moment. Four hundred and sixty-one individual, separate, distinct parts. They don't mean much to you yet. In fact, not until Western Electric puts them together. Precisely, efficiently. Then all 461 parts turn into a bell telephone. So, that you can dial almost anywhere. To help you keep in touch, Western Electric backs up your Bell Telephone Company by making dependable phones and things that connect them. Does our name ring a bell? Yes, millions of them. While well, Rusty Schweikert is outside of the uh, lunar landing craft, standing on the front steps in his so-called golden slippers, which uh, restrain him so he can use his hands and keep him tied down to the front porch so he won't float off in space, although he is tethered, of course, to the lunar module, the uh, command module pilot, David Scott, is back in the command module and has opened the hatch there. Uh, he uh, was uh, decided earlier this morning would probably stand up in the seat there and uh, lean halfway out of the hatch, see if he could retrieve the thermal sample, so-called, which we can tell you more about by going out to North American Rockwell in Downey, California, where 
Uh, test astronaut Leo Krupp is standing by. Leo, what's David Scott doing about this point? Uh, Walter, Dave is all alone in the command module, as you know, and he is attitude holding uh, both vehicles with the uh, stabilization control system of the command module. Uh, he has the hatch open, so he is also in a hard suit, pressurized to about uh, 3.7 pounds in his suit, so he is also suffering from uh, lack of mobility, so he's probably not moving around too much. He's in the couch, uh, probably observing Rusty Swigard and, and uh, tending to the system. I noticed a little while ago he said he turned the limit cycle off, which would cut down on the number of jet firings to maintain the desired attitude. Uh, one other thing that Dave has done is installed a 16 millimeter camera on the open hatch, which is pointed back toward the lunar module. So he will have some some movie film of uh, Rusty's walk in space uh, after the vehicles get back to Earth. Uh, if, if they don't uh, let that float away, uh, as happened on one of the Gemini flights, I recall, Leo. Uh, well, we have a pretty good bracket on it, Walter. So. It's attached uh, to a bracket uh, to the inside of the hatch. And with the hatch open, it's pointed back looking at the limb. It's, it's fairly secure. I doubt if we're going to lose it. Uh, Leo, now if he tries to uh, stand up and get out of the hatch, uh, as was earlier uh, suggested, what does he actually have to do? Well, uh, the center couch is removed, so it won't be too much of a problem for Dave to uh, to float over to the sill and reach out and retrieve that one thermal sample that's located very close to the edge of the hatch. Uh, it should be a very easy task for him to get that particular sample. Now, the other samples are located further down on the, uh, on the skirt, the fairing between the command and service module, and he'll probably not attempt to retrieve those. Uh, is, the, is mobility greatly restricted when that suit is pressurized, uh, Leo? Well, the mobility isn't uh, greatly restricted, Walter. However, it takes a lot of effort to do any work. Uh, if you try to bend your arms or bend your wrist, you're fighting against the 3.7 pounds of pressure you have in your suit. So uh, a, a very easy task becomes quite fatiguing physically. So it wipes out all the advantage you uh, gain from weightlessness then? Uh, that's right. You you have to work very slowly when you're in a pressurized suit, and we try not to do any unnecessary work because you will uh, exert yourself very easily if you, if you try to overdo it while you're pressurized. This is one of the concerns, I assume, uh, when they decided yesterday not to try the uh, extravehicular activity, the EVA, as it's called, or EVA, uh, with uh, Rusty Schweikert when he was feeling poorly and uh, possibly run down from a day of an upset stomach. However, today, he feels fine, and he's out there on that front porch uh, of the lunar module.